Hey guys, last Monday, which I think was, I don't know, a month or two ago, I shared the story from Luke 24, which immediately followed Luke's version of the resurrection story. And in that story, we met two people who were on the road from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And as they were walking and talking about all the events of the past three days, Jesus joined them on the walk, though they didn't recognize him. It was not until much later that evening when they were sharing a meal that they actually recognized Jesus. When he took bread, when he broke it, scripture says that their eyes were open and they recognized him. Then it says that he vanished from their sight. Well, I'm the kind of person who likes to know what happened next. What's the next part of that story? And we can find out as we read further in this particular chapter. So, this is what happened after Jesus vanished from their sight. Scripture says that within the hour, the two men got up from the table and they headed back to Jerusalem. When they got to Jerusalem, they found the 11 disciples along with some other people gathered together talking about the marvelous things that had happened over the last several hours. I can only imagine that they were talking over one another very animatedly and the two travelers who had been on the road with Jesus and who had shared that meal with Jesus, I'm sure they tried to get their story in there as well. And then we learned that as they were talking, as they were gathered together, Jesus appeared in their midst. Now, I imagine that when Jesus appeared, the room went quiet. It doesn't say that, but I imagine that's what would happen if Jesus entered into a room full of his disciples. And the first thing that Jesus said to them was, peace to you, peace to you. Well, I imagine that that was the last thing these people were, were feeling. They were still trying to make sense of everything that had happened. And Jesus offered this blessing. They were startled. They were frightened. In fact, they thought Jesus was an apparition. They thought he was a spirit because a lifetime of experience had taught them that death was final. Yet Christ's presence right there tells them otherwise, but it makes sense that they were frightened and confused. Well, after Jesus pronounced peace on them, it appears that they were just staring at him, waiting, probably frozen in terror. And Jesus asked them two questions. Jesus said, why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? He asked those two questions and then he invited them to look at his wounds. He invited them to come and touch his body. Now we don't know if anybody took him up on those offers, but Jesus offered that because he wanted peace for them. He wanted answers for their doubts. Well, immediately after Jesus showed them his wounds and made this offer to come and touch him, we find what I think is a strange little phrase in verse 41. It says, and while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, Jesus said to them, have you anything here to eat? And they gave him broiled fish. But isn't that a strange little phrase? They still disbelieved for joy and were marveling. What might that mean? Still disbelieved for joy and were marveling. Well, I don't believe it means that they did not believe in the resurrected Lord because he was right there with them. They had staked their lives on the truth of the resurrection. I mean, they were just talking about it but it still doesn't make sense to them. It's still incomprehensible. It's still beyond belief. So that little phrase, they disbelieved for joy and marveled, might mean that all of this seems too good to be true. They just can't grasp it. I mean, Jesus had tried to prepare them for what was to come, but they didn't want to believe it. And it's not what they were expecting. So they were having trouble internalizing the truth 
of Jesus being Messiah because they had seen him crucified. They had seen him laying in a grave and they had also seen the empty tomb. And right at that moment, his presence was there among them. He was very much alive, but he was a lot to take in. So I wonder, has the truth of the resurrection ever seemed incomprehensible to you? Has it ever seemed like just too much to take in? Is it hard to wrap your head around it? I mean, this is an incredible gift that God offered to us in Jesus. It is incomprehensible on some very real level. Well, if you've ever felt like that, you're in good company. It is a marvelous thing, an incomprehensible thing. But don't let doubt and disbelief rob you of joy. It doesn't have to. The disciples were described as frightened and disbelieving, yet they also were described as marveling and having joy. I suspect that this is a good description of the Christian life when we take seriously who Jesus is and the wonder of his great gift to us. So if you are startled, if you are frightened, if you are anxious, if you are disbelieving at times, take heart. The gift that Jesus gave us really is beyond comprehension, but it can be yours all the same. Resurrection life is offered freely to us. I encourage you to accept this gift even among any uncertainty you might have. And when you accept this gift, accept it with joy. Look for joy. Just as Jesus kept showing up to those disciples in the first century, even after his death and resurrection. And he wants to show up for us too. So be on the lookout for Jesus as you go through these tumultuous, uncertain days in which we live.